So, um, yeah, I started collecting Beatles stuff back in 1963. Um, I was nine at the time, and at home, there was just uh, myself and my dad. Uh, dad was always um, into music. He had an old radiogram, and he'd play us um, things like Perry Como, um, Dean Martin. We'd listen um, on the radio late at night. We'd, we'd, uh, we'd lie in bed and listen to the little tranny that we had a little transistor radio and we'd listen to Radio Luxembourg but I, I specifically remember 1963 in that um, there was a competition in a, in, a, in a newspaper it showed a picture of the Beatles with shaved heads and you had to make up a, um, a, a slogan to go with it how come the Beatles had lost their hair um, very really just a, a newspaper competition but I remember entering that I can't remember what I wrote or what we wrote but my dad encouraged me and that probably became one of the first cuttings because then I started to collect cuttings out of newspapers. And then um, 1963 was um, Hanley. We had uh, Lewis's opened. And if you if you go up to Hanley now, you'll find Hanley Stoke on Trent. There's a great big. Um, it's it's called the Fireman, but he looks like Jack Frost, a giant statue stuck on the side of uh, of the Lewis's uh, building. And uh, we used to go in there, and it was incredible. They had escalators. It was the very first time we'd ever seen escalators. And both me and my dad used to go and play on the escalators. But why I mentioned the escalators, right at the bottom was a place that sold photographs of pop stars. And that's where my pocket money used to go. So, and I used to buy these little photographs for one and six. Um, so it went from scrapbook cuttings, photographs, I eventually got a record player, started to collect records, um, and then anything and everything that I saw to do with the Beatles, if I could afford, um, I would buy. The autograph there, and um, Paul McCartney, George Harrison, and Ringo Starr. When they had in the little scrapbooks, which is what these are from, the, the tendency was to get four on a page. Because these were obtained personally, not by me, but by a Beatles fan, a young lady, um, who went up to the Twickenham uh, Film Studio set, um, she actually got a whole page each, which gives you a, a really wonderful example of, uh, of Beatles autographs, 1965. The Beatles music was, I suppose, instantly catchy. Um, it was good pop music. And best of all, it was actually written by Lennon and McCartney. It was their own stuff. Whereas previously, you listened to people who were singing other people's stuff. And there were always a variety of versions of songs out. Uh, anyway, look, back in 1985, I also did uh, Beetle Quest, which is uh, the world's first uh, computer game involving the Beatles. Um, so, uh, yeah, I wrote it. I programmed it. Um, very primitive. It's a text adventure game. Um, in fact, if you go on the internet, you can download uh, Beetle Quest for free. It's out there on the internet. You can also download an emulator which will allow you to turn your computer, your PC, into a uh, Commodore 64, um, <laughs> which is very retro. Um, I also, <laughs> I met up with a guy who was uh, the Beatles chauffeur, Alf Bicknell, um, on the road with him for two years. Baby, you can drive my car, which, uh, is Alf's memoirs um, in an interesting little package that we produced ourselves and um, a thousand copies of this that's all we produced which is a nice little uh, paperback book and an audio an audio cassette of uh, me interviewing Alf so I then went on this is uh, 
just to show you, this is uh, the Beatles Christmas book. This is uh, Everywhere It's Christmas, which is uh, a book I did with uh, a friend of mine who lives in Kentucky, in the States, with Belmo. You're out there and you think, hang on, we've got a bit of plastic crap here, what's this? Uh, this is a, a, a little plastic record rack made by the company that did the uh, the, the plastic guitars, etc. These were never ever made. <laughs> they were never made to last so long. So, and this sticker here, as soon as you put records in here, the first thing that happened was this, this sticker would get destroyed by the fact that you put records in. Yep, so these are just facsimile ones. But even so, if you could find one with the original stickers, um, they go for about four and a half thousand dollars. They are Beatles, uh, <laughs> a Beatles Heineken Lager can um, back in 1986. All of a sudden, Heineken came out with if you collect the ring pulls off the top of the cans and you collect four and you send them off, we'll send you a Beatles cassette. You know, back in, in the early 60s, if, you, if, if you'd have said to us then, Here's some songs from 50 years ago. Would you like to listen to them and enjoy them? We'd have gone, what? 50 years ago? God, that's, that's, that's old people music and whatever. And yet today, if you put the radio on, or if you go around shops and you go around anywhere where there's, there's music being played, you hear an awful lot of 50s, 60s in particular, and 70s music. Let it be.